Marcus, it's Kim from Raven Kim Woodwinds and welcome to another episode of Music Archaeology. Now this is going to be a bit of a special episode because it's the first time I'm taking you guys on the road. We are heading to the University of the Philippines School of Archaeology to, to talk about the special artifact documented in the collection of the library. The University of the Philippines has been my base of research as far back as my undergrad years. I finished my Bachelor of Fine Arts at UP. I did my diploma in archaeology there and I'm currently working on my graduate research on the subject of jaw harps. I've also worked there as a graduate assistant at the Archaeological Studies Program Library, now known as the Solheim Library. Right now I'm working as an RA for various research projects of the university. So we're driving there today and I'll get you guys acquainted with my academic home. And thanks to the magic of editing, here we are. Now the UP School of Archaeology is in the campus of University of the Philippines Diliman in Quezon City. It's along Lacandula Street inside the Albert Hall building. The UP School of Archaeology is the only school of archaeology here in the Philippines and it's home to one of the most comprehensive libraries of archaeology in Southeast Asia and perhaps even the world, the Solheim Library. Now the Solheim Library is named after Dr. Wilhelm Solheim II. Dr. Solheim is largely credited for putting Southeast Asian archaeology on the map of world archaeology. Now the reason I brought you guys here today is to talk about one of the only known archaeologically excavated examples of ocarinas and vessel flutes in Southeast Asia. Now the artifact we're talking about today is mentioned in Volume 6, Number 2 of the Harvard Journal of Asiatic Studies, published in 1941. The specific article is written by a Swedish archaeologist named Olof Janse about his archaeological expeditions to Indochina and the Philippines in 1939. Now, on page 18 of that document, plate number 20, it describes a pear-shaped ocarina made of greyware accompanied by a very beautiful photograph of that artifact. It was excavated from a tomb in Hamrong Tanhoa of modern-day Vietnam. Uh, and it was dated to the Tang Dynasty from 618 to 907 AD. Let's just take a little bit of a tangent from the discussion because I want to show you guys the space I'm working from right now. I'm at the Solheim Corner, which houses some Southeast Asian artifacts. It's sort of like a mini museum within the library. And I'm currently accompanied by Lenny the Cat. Anyway, let's continue our discussion outside so I don't disturb any of the library goers. Okay, so we're back outside the library so I can go back to my regular speaking voice. Going back to the subject, what was described by Yanse as an ocarina actually resembles a Chinese shun. Now, the shun isn't too different from an ocarina, it's also a kind of vessel flute. But unlike an ocarina, it doesn't have a fipple. Instead, it has an opening on the top that you blow across like a bottle. The specific shun excavated from that tomb in Hamrong features three finger holes, which is quite similar to a shun that's still played to this day. So it's a kind of instrument played by the Yi ethno-linguistic group in Yunnan province, southwest of China. What makes this particular musical instrument especially fascinating to me is its function as a burial good or a grave good. Now these are materials that are meant to accompany the dead into the afterlife. It's a common practice across Southeast Asia and you find it in various archaeological sites. But this is the only example that I know of that features the use of a shun. Examples of this in archaeology close to home, perhaps most famously, are the burials found around Santa Ana Church, 
uh, and in more recent archaeology, in an excavation that I had hands-on involvement in was a publication on the archaeology of the Kalumat open site discussing a burial dated to 774 to 1030 AD featuring a celadon bowl. Now, the use of Chinese ceramics is quite common in these Southeast Asian grave goods because of active trade with China throughout the centuries. At this point of the video, let's wrap up the discussion and move on to listening to the music of the Shun. Dr. Wilhelm Solheim II was born on the 19th of November, 1924 in Illinois, USA. From childhood, he showed the markings of an archaeologist, an enthusiasm for knowledge, a mind for collecting, and an avid reader of volumes such as the National Geographic magazine. Young Bill would grow up to be the foremost pioneer of Southeast Asian archaeology. Dr. Solheim's research and writing was pivotal in cementing the place of Southeast Asia in mainstream world archaeology. Among his extensive publications, he was also the founding editor of Asian Perspectives, the Journal of Archaeology for Asia and the Pacific. Dr. Solheim was also an early champion, pushing back against the illicit trade of antiquities in the region. He had gone above and beyond to earn the title of Mr. Southeast Asia as he is called by his fellow prehistorians. At the heart of the library is the Solheim Corner. Apart from being a cozy reading space featuring tatami chairs and warm carpeting, it is home to a small museum housing photographs, documents, and artifacts from Dr. Solheim's long career in archaeology. 
The display is currently undergoing a revitalization thanks to the generous contribution of Dr. Victor Paz and the curation by Robin Claro Reyes IV and Jane Carlos. The esteemed archaeologist donated his personal collection of materials on archaeology and anthropology to kickstart the Archaeological Studies Library of the University of the Philippines, Diliman. To quote Dr. Paz from 2004, it was a singular significant act of generosity which came at the most vulnerable existence of our institution and was crucial to the survival of the only archaeology-dedicated program in the Philippines.